Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to talk to you about a very dangerous situation a VFR pilot can get themselves into. And that situation is a VFR pilot inadvertently getting themselves into IMC or instrument meteorological conditions, or more specifically clouds while flying. Um, if a VFR pilot gets themselves into clouds, it's important that they immediately get themselves out of those clouds um, because their chances of survival go down very quickly. Within a couple minutes, they could find themselves another statistic uh, from the FAA. And so what I'm going to talk about today and show a little bit of some clips uh, from footage that I have uh, for doing some instrument flying, um, what's involved um, relative to the Private Pilot ACS, Airman Certificate Standard, for basic instrument maneuver flying, um, the tolerance is required on, on how to do those maneuvers, and um, basically some of the scanning techniques and things you should do um, as part of your training for the sole purpose of getting you um, turned around and headed out of the clouds, the IMC conditions that you inadvertently got yourself into. So follow along. All right, so what is the primary purpose for private pilots to learn about basic instrument maneuvers? Well, first and foremost, what's driving uh, the need for and why we do do basic instrument uh, flight training? is the fatality rate associated with VR flight into IMC conditions. The visual flight rules um, VFR into instrument meteorological conditions has the highest weather-related causes of accidents each year. Um, recent statistics show that the fatality rate is 86% uh, 86 in non-commercial fixed-wing aircraft. Nearly 9 out of 10 people that find themselves um, in meteorological conditions accidentally end up a statistic like that. And it's not just the VFR private pilot, it's also instrument rated pilots uh, that again get themselves um, inadvertently into these IMC conditions. Um, so of those 86% uh, that end up in fatalities, a third of them are associated with IFR rated pilots. So what are the basic instrument maneuvers for VFR pilot? What do they actually have to do for training? Well, first, they have to learn basically the skills to control an aircraft solely by reference to the aircraft's instruments, not looking outside, not looking at the horizon. So what does this mean for the VFR private pilot uh, candidate? Well, again, it's for the purposes of the training is to develop uh, the ability um, to properly control the aircraft um, by its instruments solely, um, but it is not the purpose to help them develop the skill set to fly in the clouds or in conditions of poor visibility, like high haze. But instead, the whole purpose of the training is to equip the VFR pilots with the skills to maintain control of an aircraft and safely navigate the way back out of the clouds in the event they unintentionally find themselves entering clouds or entering instrument meteorological conditions, again, which could be associated with haze or, or mist. So in summary, the whole purpose of basic instrument maneuver training for the uh, private pilot is to enable them to get the plane turned around with the blue sky up and the brown sky down and heading back a 180 degree turn um, from the direction they came to get themselves back out of the clouds in a safe manner. And they only have a couple minutes to make this happen. Um, if they wait any longer, they're probably going to find themselves uh, in an unusual attitude and a stall or spin uh, and becoming one of those statistics. So per the private pilot airman certificate standards, uh, area Operations 8, um, they go, that section goes over the basic instrument maneuvers. Um, there's several tasks. Uh, task A is just teaching the student how to do straight and level flight, uh, uh, wearing a um, view limiting device, uh, basically turns left, right, um, and maintaining headings and altitudes uh, and doing uh, Task A. Task B is associated with doing constant airspeed climbs, you know, at fixed airspeeds, maybe 90 knots in a, in a Hyper Warrior or, or Skyhawk. Task C is constant airspeed descents, uh, basically going up and down here. Uh, they, they can be also um, complicated by doing constant airspeed climbs and descents with turns. Um, as we see here, task D is about turns to headings. And then task E is recovery from unusual flight attitudes. Um, basically, there's a couple main conditions here. Uh, you find yourself in a nose high attitude. Uh, the first thing you want to do is get that uh, nose down and add power in there and then level the wings. Uh, the other scenario is you find yourself in a nose low banked angle uh, with full power. It's getting that power out, leveling the wings and starting to pull back to level off and then bringing the power back in. 
That's task E. And then finally, task F is basic radio communications, navigation systems, facilities, and radar services. Um, task F is really more about um, making sure you have the skills to uh, talk on the radio and, and use the um, navigation services and the radar services that are provided to um, avoid getting yourself inadvertently into clouds if you see them uh, out in the horizon. It's not about making a radio call in the middle of getting into a cloud and trying to save yourself by having somebody on the other end of the radio try to, to help you get out of the clouds. If you're on your own at that point. It's really more about getting yourself turned around as quickly as you can and as safely as you can um, in a standard rate turn. So when it comes to teaching basic instrument maneuvers, um, we have our students, again, wear a view-limiting device such as foggles or a hood um, over their head or, uh, and eyes, basically, uh, such that they can't see outside the aircraft and see the horizon. Instead, their eyes are focused on the uh, traditional six-pack with inside the cockpit. Um, there are several instrument scanning techniques that we teach, um, and usually there's um, a preference by a student or a pilot. Uh, some techniques are for better for certain types of uh, activities while flying under instruments, but in general, um, any one of them can work. Uh, the the um, technique that I mainly use is the radial hub and spoke where your attitude indicator um, is your center uh, instrument or your home base and basically you go from your hub to any one of the spokes for example airspeed indicator over to your sorry, attitude indicator over to your airspeed indicator attitude indicator over to your altimeter and then attitude indicator to your VSI and so on and so forth and you keep this scan going constantly. Um, this can be pretty ex exhausting for the private pilot initially because there's just so much uh, movement of the eyes and, and, and taking in that information and reacting accordingly with the yoke and your power setting. Uh, another popular technique is the inverted V-scan. Again, the starting position is the attitude indicator. It's your home base. And you go from the attitude indicator to the turn coordinator and back and from the attitude indicator to the VSI and back. And you just kind of sweep back and forth between those instruments, again, with your attitude indicator being your kind of home base or key instrument to look at on a very regular basis. Uh, there's also the T-scan technique. Again, the attitude indicator is your home base. Um, you'll look from center to left, uh, then center to right, then bottom to center. Um, always coming back to the AI to see what the big picture looks like. Basically, you got blue sky above, earth below, level wings, and you're not banked unless you want to be. Uh, then the last technique is rectangular scan. You basically start with one instrument and you work your way clockwise or counterclockwise around the six pack. So by the end of the training, there's some required skills that the Airman Certificate Standard wants. For level flight and turns to heading, um, they want to make sure that you can maintain straight and level flight using the proper instrument cross-checking and interpretation of the instruments and maintain a uh, coordinated control of the aircraft. And you must maintain plus or minus 200 feet on your altitude, a heading plus or minus 20 degrees, and airspeed plus or minus 10 knots. Uh, for constant airspeed climbs and descents, uh, again, they want to see you transition to the climb or descent pitch attitude and power uh, setting on assigned heading using proper instrument cross-checking and interpretation and coordinated flight control and application. And then they want you to climb or descend at a constant airspeed to specific altitudes or um, in straight and level flight or turns. And again, like with the turns and headings, you want to be able to show that you can level off at the assigned altitude and maintain altitude at plus or minus 200 feet, heading at plus or minus 20 degrees, and airspeed plus or minus 10 knots. Um, the other big one is the recovery from unusual flight attitudes. Again, um, we need to be able to recognize we had unusual flight attitudes by looking at the attitude indicator. Our airspeed indicator is also a very, very key, key tool to look at. If you see your airspeed is really, really slow, most likely you're pitched up high. If it's going really, really fast, you're probably diving. And so um, as part of your uh, check ride for private pilot, you're going to need to um, show and perform how you can correct for unusual flight attitudes that the examiner may put you in, or in the real world, how you might find yourself in if you get into clouds. So basically, we're looking for smooth flight control of application uh, to resolve the pitch and bank attitudes while staying within the airplane's limitations and flight parameters. And then lastly, radio communications and navigation system facilities and radar services. This is really to make sure uh, that you can maintain control of the aircraft while complying with air traffic control instructions. Um, really, this shouldn't even be used uh, on, um, when you find yourself inadvertently in the clouds. You really want to get yourself turned around as quickly as you can and as safely as you can 
uh, and maintain uh, the tolerances of the plus and minus 200 feet, plus and minus 20 degrees of heading and airspeed uh, within 10 knots. So to wrap this up, it's most important, and it's a requirement, uh, that every time you go out and fly, you get a formal weather briefing. And a weather briefing that not only to protect yourself from a legal issue, but most importantly, to prevent you from having an accident and becoming another fatal statistic. So one of the best ways to avoid getting into IMC conditions is to get a weather brief and listen to what the, what the, the briefer is telling you um, and do what they say. If they say VFR flight not recommended, don't go flying that day. Um, and then again, using all the other techniques to avoid clouds um, such that you can prevent yourself from becoming a statistic. Anyways, hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you catch me on my next video.